Hey guys, Kim here. Thank you so much for checking out my video. So last week I put out a poll to see what um, type of video you guys wanted to see. It seems that my tutorial videos um, do better than just my pouring videos. So the general paint mixing and consistency video got the most votes. So here it is. So what I have today is I have a couple different pouring mediums that I'm gonna show you guys. And I'm going to show you guys how to mix up paints and the different consistencies that I use for different pours. So I just wanna tell you guys that I'm not an expert at any one type of pour. I know there are people on here who kind of specialize in certain types of pours. If you've seen, you know, Molly of Molly's Artistry, Canel Sirocco, Rinsky, they all do very beautiful Dutch pours and I would consider them experts at Dutch pours. And there are many other people, Gina DeLuca, I would consider her an expert at say straight pours. Um, but like I said, I do a little bit of everything and you know, I'm probably not the foremost authority on any one pour, but I think I'm decent enough to kind of show you guys the basics of if you want to get started. So that aside, let me show you guys what we're working with here. So I have a couple different pouring mediums. This is my Floetrol that I've shown you guys before. I keep it in this squeeze bottle. And don't worry if you saw my previous video where I mistook my Floetrol for white paint. I made sure that this is the Floetrol because I just strained it in here. So that is good to go. And um, that is one thing. If you want to use Floetrol, you do need to use a strainer because it does tend to get a little chunky. So I use this kitchen strainer I got off of Amazon. I think it's actually just like a, a cocktail strainer is what they call it. So you definitely want to strain your flow trail before you use it. And as you can see here, it's still a little wet because I just rinsed it. And that's a good pro tip. If you're gonna strain your flow trail, make sure that you rinse this right away because you're going to be out of strainer real quick if you don't rinse it right away because that flow trail will stick to it and it is very hard to get off. So, like I said, Floetrol here. I have Gluol here. Um, I don't usually use Gluol, and I will explain to you guys why when we're mixing it up, but I wanna just show you guys uh, the things you can use. And then the last easy and cheap option for a pouring medium is water. And I also don't usually tend to use water because it will suck the pigment out of your paints real quick. And you also cannot get very much um, pourable paint from just using water. I know there, um, I know Olga, Olga Sobi uses water fairly often, so does Rinsky for her Dutch pours. Um, and I would suggest if you wanted to use water, that uh, Dutch pour is probably the best option for using water. So let's go ahead and start mixing here. So these cups are probably one of the best investments that I've made. I don't like to use a scale when I um, mix my paints. So I just kind of use these um, very helpful measurements on the cup. I'm not exactly sure how accurate they are, but it's just kind of um, a good baseline. And so what I normally do, my usual pouring medium of choice is Floetrol, just plain American Floetrol. And I'll usually do a two to one ratio. So by two to one, I mean two parts Floetrol. So to make it easy, let's say I do one, two ounces of Floetrol and I'll do one ounce of paint. So I'll end up with three ounces overall. And then you're usually going to need to tweak the consistency from there. So let's go ahead and start by adding, we're just gonna make this real easy, two ounces about of Floetrol. And I will show you guys two different types of paint as well. So I use a lot of Montmart. Um, I get these off of Amazon. These are excellent paints in my opinion. They're semi-matte paints. They dry very nicely. I've never had any issues with cracking crazing, any of that stuff. I love these. Um, I can put a link to these on Amazon or in the description. 
So let's go ahead and put about an ounce of this in. Honestly, these are a little bit um, thicker paints. If you've used craft paints before, those are definitely thinner than these. The only thing with these is you need to make sure that you clean off the rim there. You see that's gonna come right out into the cup if I don't get that out of there. So you'll see that these are pretty thick paints. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this to the three, like I said. And honestly, with these, you can even do a three to one ratio because they are pretty thick paints. But for the sake of easiness, we're going to do two to one. And I'd say that's pretty close. Just make sure that paint sinks in there. And so I'm just going to mix this up and you want to mix your paints really well because you can get little chunks of unmixed paint in your painting which aren't very pretty. So I just kind of go get the stick in along the bottom here, just like that. Just go all the way around the cup. And then I also like to scrape along the sides here. And just make sure that's mixed well. Just go along the bottom one more time. So let's show you guys what the consistency of this looks like now, okay? Really thick. It doesn't even really want to run off the stick. Now oh, there it goes. Yeah, that is really thick paint. So like I said, um, I usually will even do a three to one ratio with Floetrol and Montmart. But this is really I really wouldn't use this thickness for much of anything. Um, I'd want to water it down just a little bit. But I just want to show you guys um, how you kind of, the best way to mix and then where you go from here. So what I would want to do to this is add some water to it. And so, and so, let's see the best way to put this. Um, when I first started paint pouring, um, you know, I kind of figured you mix up paints and they're pourable and you can just pour this straight on the canvas and you're going to have a beautiful painting, right? Um, yeah, I figured out really quickly that's not true. <laughs> and if you've been doing this for, you know, more than a couple days, you've probably been sucked into the YouTube videos and you see that there's so many different types of pours, so many different brands of paints, different pouring mediums, all that kind of stuff. And I feel like the warm honey consistency is the term that gets thrown around to a lot of um, beginners. And maybe that's a good starting point, but that's really not that helpful because if you want to, you know, get good at a certain type of pour, it's this is the first step in making sure that your pour is going to turn out nicely. So if you want to do a Dutch pour, it's obviously going to be a lot thinner than this. If you want to do a ring pour, it's probably going to be still a little thinner than this, but definitely thicker than a Dutch pour. So learning the different type of consistencies is the most important thing before you, you know, get disappointed in why your pour didn't work. So. That's probably the main reason why your pour didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, if it doesn't, because your paint wasn't the right consistency. So let me show you guys. I'm just going to slowly add water. So this is where a little bit of practice and experience comes in because you can start with a two to one ratio, but from there you kind of have to know what type of pour you're gonna do and what type of consistency paint you need for that type of pour. So just to make this easy, I'm gonna say we're gonna do a, a ring pour. 
because it won't need to be much thinner than this. So that's still, still really thick. So you just add a little bit of water at a time and you just make sure you mix it in really well. And as long as you don't go crazy and dump, you know, half of this cup of water in here at once, you shouldn't really have a problem getting it slowly to the consistency you need without a scale. Because it really is, like I said, every paint is different. Every, even the same brand, same color is going to be a different consistency if you buy it again. So you can never really trust that it's going to be the same exact ratio every time. So the two to one Floetrol and paint ratio is a good starting point. And then adding water from there is, that's the way that I do it and I find it works best for me. I feel like it's probably the easiest way to um, teach someone if they're just starting as well. So you can see here that that's leaving a little bit of a mound on a mound is what I would call that. And that's probably close to what I would use for a ring pour because ring pours you want to use um, thicker paints because you want it to be, um, to be able to hold its shape when you stretch it or when you spin it. So thicker paints are gonna be better at holding their shape than thinner paints, obviously. Um, you're also going to get fewer cells with thicker paints because um, you're gonna have a hard time or the paint's gonna have a hard time rising through each other when it's this thick. So you might still get um, cells. Um, they're not really cells, it's probably just gonna be air bubbles that pop and uh, they're gonna create cells in your painting. But for the most part, if you want big cells, you want air toward thinner paints. If you want fewer cells and something that you can tilt and not have it run all over the place, you want thicker paints. So probably something like this for a ring pour. Okay, so now let me show you guys what glue looks like if we mix the same ratio. So I've got a brand new bottle of glue I bought just for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the two to one. And you know what? I'm not even gonna use that much because I'm just gonna stop at about one. You know what, let me also wipe the top of this glue bottle off real quick, otherwise I'll probably never be able to get it open again, which sounds like something I would do. So let's just wipe that real quick and get the lid back on. So I'm gonna take the same exact paint that I mixed the Floetrol with. I'm gonna do the two to one again. So I only have one ounce of glue in here, so I'm gonna to go to one and a half. So that'll be two to one. And that looks pretty good to me. I'll grab another stir stick. And while I'm stirring this, I'll just tell you guys the reason I don't usually like to use glue is because it always dries really um, just kind of funky on me. The Floetrol has um, a bit of a self-leveling property and I can actually show you guys, if I can find it, a painting that I did using glue. It was a flip cup and the way it dries is very different from Floetrol. It's uh, kind of just a little bit bumpy. It doesn't have that smooth texture that Floetrol will give you. So I tend to shy away from glue, even though uh, I know a lot of people use glue and I, I don't know if they have is the same issues I do or not, but like I said, I like Floetrol, and Floetrol is actually, I think, almost a bit cheaper than glue um, if you get the gallon of it. Don't buy the quartz because they're gonna rip you off with that. If you can find the gallon of it at a local hardware store, I know I buy it at Home Depot here in California, and it's much cheaper than buying a quart of it. 
Okay. So let me show you guys what the two to one of the, just dropped my strainer, the glue looks like. That is pretty thick. Definitely leaving a lot of mounds on mounds. So like I said, this isn't really something I would use for a pour. You definitely need to water this down. Um, I'm not gonna go through watering this down. It's basically the same as what you would do with the Floetrol, but that's how glue looks, mixing it the same ratio of Floetrol. And then I will do water real quick just to show you guys, and I'm also not gonna do very much of this just because it's going to use up a lot of my paint. You don't need very much water. That's not even an ounce that I'm putting in there. We're gonna use the same paint. And let me, I'll just get this up to an ounce. Let's see what that looks like. I rarely use water, like I said, so I'm not even really sure how this is gonna look. Super, super watery. And this you need to make sure is really well mixed, which I am not doing. I'm just throwing paints all over the place now. All right. Really get in there here, huh? Still, oh, I'm just gonna be covered in burnt sienna for the rest of the day. That's okay. All right, so you can see here that this is really, really thin. Like this is too thin even for a Dutch pour because it's not even, this'll just be a problem. Um, so you saw how much paint I put in there compared to the water. And that is what you get when you use paint and water. And like I said before, those Montmartre paints are fairly thick. So if you're gonna use anything um, like a craft paint or anything thinner than a Montmartre paint with water, be very careful because it's going to sap all of the color out of it really quickly because water just tends to break down um, the acrylic binders in the paint um, other than, uh, or unlike the glue and the Floetrol tend to do. So, like I said, I tend to prefer the Floetrol, adding water to it. I've never had any problems with it. Um, drying weird, cracking, anything like that. Um, the only other pouring medium I've used before is the um, Golden Color Pouring Medium. And um, overall, using it by itself, I don't really recommend it. It's super expensive and it's, um, it's almost the consistency of water. So you have to use a lot of it. Um, it's made for golden brand acrylics, which have a very high pigmentation load. So if you wanted to use it with those, it's, it would probably work better, but I don't use all golden brand acrylics just because they are very expensive. So if you want to pour on a budget, these are probably your best options. Um, let me see if I can dig up the painting real quick that I was telling you about with the glue and I will show you guys that real quick just how it dried Okay, so this is the painting I was telling you guys so this is a flip cup I did so um, It did have silicone in it. So don't mind all of the ugly silicone spots But you can see let me see if I can get it in the light here You can see here. It's kind of almost um, pockmarked the way that it dried Let's see. You can see there that it's not, yeah, there you go. You can see that it's kind of just not very flat and it's just, um, that's how glue tends to dry for me all the time. So like I said, I don't like to use it. The Floetrol kind of levels everything out so everything is smooth. Okay, so let me show you guys real quick um, just the difference between something like the Montmartre paints and the um, a thinner type of paint. Let me bring you guys back down here. 
So I'm just gonna use Floetrol again. And so what I have here is the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. Um, this is a great paint to use if you're doing Dutch pours, anything larger where you need um, a big quantity. This is a pretty good deal. This is from Michaels. So I'm just gonna do, this one I usually do a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'll go ahead and do, I'm just gonna mix up just one ounce of Floetrol and we'll do, see how much thinner this paint is compared to um, the Montmartre paint I was just using. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up real quick. And I know white is a bad choice when you're mixing with uh, another white pouring medium, but I the only other color I have is black and black is very hard to see uh, consistency wise when I try to show you guys on the camera. So I figured white might be a better option so I'm just gonna mix this up. And so there is the consistency of that. Still pretty on the thick side there. And that's a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio of the paint and Floetrol. And just a good thing um, I keep in mind is your paint is only gonna be as thin as what your pouring medium is. So your Floetrol, that's as thin as your paint is gonna be unless you water it down with something else. You can water it down with another pouring medium, like that golden pouring medium I was telling you about. You can water it down with water, but um, to get it thinner than the Floetrol itself, you need to add something thinner. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys um, the different consistencies I use for different pours. So I will be back shortly. Okay, so I mixed up um, a little bit more of the burnt sienna um, in each of these cups. I started with the two to one uh, Floetrol ratio like I did originally. And I have from the thinnest to the thickest. And I really only use about three different consistencies. Um, so on the thinner side, you're gonna have your Dutch pours, and maybe a straight pour with this, maybe a little bit thicker for a straight pour. You can see that that just goes right in. There's no mound. It does not even really leave a trace. So this is what you want um, pretty much for Dutch pours. I don't think you really use much of anything else this thin. Um, the only other thing I might use this for is if I'm doing a swipe. You want your swipe color to be probably about this thin or maybe a little bit thicker because when you swipe, this is how you're gonna make your cells and usually it's almost the same as with pearl pores. You want your top color to kind of be able to be thin and sink through your other colors to make those cells. So this is probably the thinnest you're ever gonna want your paint to be. You're also going to get um, more cells with thinner paint. So thinner paint, you're going to um, the paints are going to be able to rise up through each other and create those cells. Over here on the thicker side, you're not going to be able to get as many cells. Um, like I said before, you will be able to have more stability. So like for a ring pour or anything else that you want to tilt and not lose um, your design. So this is probably the second consistency I use the most. And you can see here that it does leave a little bit of a mound little bit of trace when you move the stick around. And I would use this probably for um, a flip cup. Might also use something like this for a straight pour, maybe water it down just a tad more. but this is probably the best consistency for a flip cup.
And the thickest that I tend to use See there that it leaves a few mounds on top of each other before it sinks in. And something like this I would use for a ring pour, because like I said, when you're um, trying to keep your design, the thicker paints are going to hold up better. They're not going to tilt as quickly. Um, I'd also use this probably if I'm doing a swipe. Like I said, I would use the thinnest for the um, swipe color and probably um, something like this for your base colors. Because like I said, it's almost like doing a pearl pour, which is, um, you know, the same thing. You put a thinner paint on top of thicker paints and you get cool effects. So even when I'm doing um, like straight pours, I tend to make um, my metallics usually a bit thicker than my other paint, just because um, the differing densities of the paints are going to what are going to be what create the cells. So you don't need to use silicone or um, you know coconut oil, whatever else people use for cells, because it's always a pain to clean. So that's um, basically what I had planned for this video. Um, if you guys have any other questions or would like to see anything else in terms of paint mixing or um, you know what consistency you should use for your type of pour please let me know in the comments if this video was helpful please hit that thumbs up for me it's very very much appreciated if you enjoyed the video and the content that i put up please consider subscribing and hit that little notification bell if you are so inclined to do so that is also very much appreciated and thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.